Hello YouTube. Welcome to a very much requested video on how to install and set up Windows 10 on a Dell Inspiron 1525. First of all, we'll go over the specification of this particular machine. My Dell Inspiron 1525 is equipped with two and a half gigs of RAM, a 160 gig hard drive, and of course the onboard Intel video. And wireless card that I am using in here is the original Dell Wireless 1510 Wireless G card. If your model has a different wireless card, I will not be able to uh, fully help you in this video, but most of the cards should work out of the box in Windows 10 because there's a pretty significant driver database. Because I'm only running 2.5 gigs of RAM, I will be installing the 32-bit version. If you have 4 gigabytes, or maybe even more, which is not really supported by these machines anyway, I would recommend going 64-bit, because a 32-bit operating system cannot fully address 4 gigabytes of memory. So keep that in mind as well. What you'll need to do in order to install Windows 10 is prepare a DVD with Windows 10 uh, 32-bit or 64-bit for your liking, or, uh, you know, burn a copy to a USB flash drive like this one. I'll be installing from USB, and I will be guiding you how to do that. So before you turn on the machine, of course, plug in the USB flash drive. Like so. Then we'll turn the machine on. Of course, keep it hooked up hooked up to AC power all the time. I believe it's F12, yeah. It will send us to the one-time boot menu. My particular model takes a little while sometimes to boot up. So your model may vary here. The one-time boot menu looks like this. I know the screen is a little bit dim, but here on top it says internal HDD, and that says USB storage device, CD, DVD, CDRW drive, or the onboard NIC, which is the network interface card. That means you can install Windows from your network if you have a Windows deployment server available. That's not the focus of this video. We will boot from the USB storage device. If you have a DVD drive, boot from the CD, DVD, CD, or W drive option and hit enter. You should be greeted with a screen. This means we're booting into legacy mode because there is no UEFI support on these older laptops. And now it's pretty much just playing a waiting game until setup loads up. All right, here we are. Setup is loaded up. Now you can select the language you want to install, your regional settings, and of course your keyboard layout. In my case, I'm going to install Windows 10 in Dutch using the Dutch locale and, of course, a United States international keyboard. Now we're going to click Install. Okay, I'm not going to put in a serial just yet. We're going to skip it for now and use an evaluation version. My particular ISO is a sort of all-in-one type of deal. I can now select Windows 10 Pro or Windows 10 Home. Your ISO may only be Home or Pro, so you will not be greeted with this screen. I will select Windows 10 Home for this installation and click Next. There we go. Now we're going to select a custom install. I'm not going to do an upgrade here, and this is a clean installation. So we're going to remove every single partition we have. We're going to click New. We're going to click Apply. OK. And Windows will set up its own uh, partition scheme that it needs. We also cre create this system reserve partition, as well as your ordinary data partition. Going to select Partition 2 and click Next. Windows will now install. During this install, you will be greeted with all kinds of different screens. It will just pretty much uh, do this automatically. If something changes, I will get back to you. But for now, we're just going to have to play the waiting game. Once the first phase is over, you'll be greeted, of course, with the reboot screen. So let's reboot. 
you should be able to re safely remove the USB flash drive in this stage. So let's see what happens. Yeah, it's thinking about it. There we go. This setup should all, uh, this process should all be very similar to uh, what Windows 8 is like to uh, set up on a machine like this. Now it's just going to install devices and all the good stuff. So basically, um, once all of this stuff is over and we'll greet it with uh, an actual screen where we can fill in the username and all that good stuff, I'll get back to you. But for now, we're just going to let it do its stuff and. Uh, you shouldn't really do anything. Just wait and it, uh, it'll get there eventually. Okay, reboot it once again. And now you once again greet it with a screen to put in your product code or product key. Once again, we will not do this right now. We'll click, we'll do this later. Now, you should be greeted with this screen to connect to your wireless network, if you have one, of course. This means that your Wi-Fi card is working out of the box. So I'm just going to uh, put in my Wi-Fi key. We're just going to use Express uh, settings for now. If you're uncomfortable with Microsoft spying on you, then you should not be using a computer. So keep that in mind. You can adjust all of the privacy settings later. But still, if privacy is a concern for you as a computer user, you should just disconnect from internet right away. There is no privacy anymore in this modern day world. So yeah. Now it's just telling us to stick around for a while. And now we're greeted with the typical screen that you would also see if you were going to install Windows 8. It's setting things up for us right now, and as soon as it's done, we'll be greeted with the desktop. So in the meantime, I'll once again shut out the video, and we'll get back once the operating system is up and running. Okay, now it wants me to set up a Microsoft account. Let's skip this as well, because I just want a regular user, no passwords. I didn't really use this laptop uh, in an environment where I would require a password, so I tend to uh, like to live dangerously. Right. So now it's just done some updates and I'm just going to uh, set up the apps. So let me take a moment. Yeah, sure. So yeah, we're almost ready, we're almost done installing Windows 10. And uh, as you saw, it was a pretty straightforward process and uh, didn't even take all that long. You know, you have to add about 5 to 10 minutes to what I actually recorded in here. But that should give you a rough idea of uh, how long it would take to install Windows 10 on an Inspiron 1525. Which is not an awfully long time. So yeah, once we're up and running, We'll uh, get to setting up your drivers if you are missing some, and uh, yeah. As you can see, Windows 10 is now up and running. So let's see if we're missing any drivers. Well, as we can see, wireless is working. There's the icon in the bottom right corner. Sound is working, there's no cross there.
Michigan here. Works perfectly. So let's see, let's go to the device manager to see if there are any other drivers missing. So just right click the Windows flag and uh, select device manager. Let's see here. It's missing two base system devices and a video controller. Okay, that's fine. It does say here that the mobile Intel 965 Express chipset driver is installed, just a regular Microsoft driver. But we are just going to force the driver from the Intel website. The video controller you just saw is basically um, the HDMI output on the laptop. So we're just going to go to Google, using Microsoft Edge in this case, and we're just going to type in Intel GMA X3100 and we're, yeah, driver Windows 7, that's just fine. I'm going to click the second link there. This will take us to the Intel website. It's a driver from 2009, so it's actually slightly older than what Windows installs, of course, by default. But we're just going to ignore that fact and install the driver anyway. Let's click on the file name, and click Accept the Terms of License Agreement, and we'll start downloading. It's only about uh, 22 megabytes, so it should download pretty quickly if your connection is pretty quick. The problem with this machine now is that I don't have wireless and adapter installed, so it will only download at about 2 megabytes per second maximum. But this is just to show you how stock components handle uh, Windows 10. So here's the install shield wizard. We'll now install the drivers. We're going to click next. Right. See now it's complaining. You can't really read this, but it's now complaining that the drivers that are now currently installed in Windows 10 are older than the ones we're going to force on top of them. We're going to ignore that. We're just going to click Next. We're just going to click Next again. And accept the license agreement. Next. And now it's going to install the video driver. Once the video driver is installed, we should be good to go. We might still need a chipset driver, We're, uh, we'll look at that in a little bit. There we go, new hardware found. So it is in fact accepting the driver. Now it's installing the HDMI output. And it says it's ready, okay, next. It will prompt you to reboot later, or reboot, but uh, we'll do that later. It still has these two base system devices. They're probably related to the chipset. I uh, wouldn't pay too much attention to that. Now let's just go to the Dell website because we need two more drivers. Come on, drivers, enter. Let's see here. The drivers that we still want now are the chipset driver. There we go. The SD card driver is already installed, so we don't need to update that. Windows Update will take care of that. So this is the mobile chipset driver. We're going to install that right away. Oh, right. It's set to Windows XP. Let's change that to Windows Vista just to make sure that we get the proper drivers. So yeah, chipset driver. It's the same thing anyway. 
it's going to unpack these files at a certain location, in this case under C drive in the Dell drivers folder. I'm going to rename this folder to chipset instead of R something and another. Create the folder, so now we know where the driver is located, we'll be able to install it later on. So the other driver that we want is the driver for the touchpad, because quite frankly, um, the default touchpad is it's just not working properly. This driver is quite shitty. There is no guarantee that this driver will work under Windows 10, but we'll give it a shot anyway. And here is the chipset driver. Let's see what it does with that. This should take care of those base system devices in the device manager, I think. There we go. Once again, we'll reboot later. Whoops. <laughs> you download the uh, stop there. So now we're going to install the touchpad driver. We'll minimize edge for now. Continue. So now we're going to name this folder touchpad. I know it's actually called a trackpad or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's complaining that uh, their driver utility does not work on a Windows 10. Okay. But we're going to do here, we're going to the, into device manager. The base system devices are still there for some reason. But uh, yeah, we're just not going to be, uh, we're not going to bother with those because it's probably not really relevant right now. We're going to go to mice and input devices, PS2 compatible mouse. We're going to update the driver. We're going to look for a driver on the computer. So we have to go to our C drive because that's already started in the Dell folder. And then in the touchpad folder, we're going to select VI32 because that's Vista 32 bit. That's where it stores the driver. Let's hit OK and click Next. And now it's just going to install the driver manually, which is very convenient. There we go, now it says Dell Touchpad. And now, all we have to do is reboot the computer, and Windows 10 is all set up and ready. So now you can start installing your software, and, uh, you know, enjoy your Dell 1525 for a couple more years to come, if you have the appropriate specifications. I'll just go over this once again. Mine has two and a half gigs of RAM. I don't recommend using Windows 10 on less than two gigabytes. And mine has a Core 2 Duo CPU. If yours has a Pentium dual core at at least 1.6 gigahertz, you should be fine. But if you have a single core Celeron, then by all means stick to Windows Vista or Windows XP, or maybe Windows 7 if you have more than two gigabytes of RAM. But you really don't want to go here with just one single core Celeron CPU. So yeah, this was my guide to installing and setting up Windows 10 Home, in this case, on the Dell Inspiron 1525. Hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.